Very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Bloom with the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, Barbados now has the ability to test for viruses like chikungunya and Zika and will no longer need to rely on the Caribbean Public Health Agency or CARFA in neighboring Trinidad and Tobago. The island now has a state-of-the-art laboratory, which will give Barbados the ability to test for complex viruses, not only here, but across the Eastern Caribbean. Lisa Lord reports. At the height of the Zika and chikungunya epidemic in Barbados, the island sent dozens of blood samples to CARFA for testing, but this will now be a thing of the past. The new Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory now has the capacity to test for those viruses and many others. The functions previously carried out at three facilities, the Public Health Laboratory, the Lady Mead Reference Unit and the Leptospiral Laboratory will now fall under this multi-purpose lab located at Enmore. Health Minister John Boyce says a credible and accessible laboratory service capable of producing reliable results is crucial. He says the lab will help Barbados meet its commitment to international health regulations. The Ministry of Health continues to be ever vigilant of infectious diseases, especially those that are emerging and re-emerging globally, such as H1N1, chikungunya, and Zika. In addition, we have continued to focus on the challenges of antimicrobial resistance and climate change, as well as threats to biological, chemical, and radiological agents. In the face of these challenges, we in the region must have safe, accurate, and capable laboratory services to facilitate the early detection of known and unknown pathogens in order to detect potential outbreaks capable of, capable of severe malaise, morbidity, and mortality. Minister Boyce also spoke about the two outstanding individuals after whom the lab is named and their commitment to such services on the island. Barbados, despite its small size, has continued to develop its health care services to provide quality and equitable care for its population. Instrumental to such progress, and especially in the area of development of laboratory services and technologies in Barbados, were Mr. Cecil Best, Cecil Best, retired senior laboratory technologist, and the late Dr. Wilfred Dos Santos, senior consultant pathologist both of whom understood the importance of medical public health laboratory services and who have made significant contribu contributions in their respective areas. The U.S. government partially funded the lab to the tune of $12 million. U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Linda taglia Latela says she is proud of its capabilities. It includes the only biosafety level three capacity on the island, as well as departments for hematology, serology, molecular biology, tuberculosis, bacteriology, chemical pathology, and quality assurance. This enhanced lab capacity will not only serve Barbados, but the entire region, thereby increasing the Caribbean region's health security. Strengthening global capacity to prevent, detect, and respond to new and existing risks will support a safer and more healthy world. The 20,000 square foot hurricane resistant facility houses administrative offices, training rooms, and makes provisions for support staff. Lisa Lord, CBC News. Thanks, Lisa. Well, food establishments and other businesses on the South Coast will remain open for the time being. That's according to the acting chief medical officer, Dr. Kenneth George. He was speaking to CBC following a meeting with Health, Barbados Water Authority, and other officials to discuss the latest developments regarding the sewage problem plaguing the south of the island. The Ministry of Health has not arrived at that decision yet. Um, remember that um, decisions are taken in as a process, so we don't have um, information reaching um, us that we need to be closing down properties. But you know, though that type of information may change, and um, we are here to protect the public's interest. And the Ministry of Health 
we use, um, you know, all at its disposal, including the legislation there, which is quite clear, if we need to take further action. But at this point in time, we um, are not going that route. Dr. George says the meeting came up with some additional short-term strategies, including more intensive training for food service providers. Now, that starts on Thursday next week. But they're also ramping up the presence of public health personnel in the South Coast and concentrating on the biggest problem area for the spill. So everyone knows that it is in front of Lanterns Mall that is causing the, um, the most concern to us. And therefore, we are going to be looking at all the properties surrounding that area, making sure that those properties report any case of illness to the Ministry of Health. It is a requirement under the Health Services Act. And we are going to work with those properties to make sure that we can institute prevention and control measures at those sites to make sure that the staff and the patrons are protected. And Dr. George says one new case of gastro has been reported and health officials will continue to investigate the other cases. Barbados has recorded its first fatal accident for the year involving a car and a Barbadian who lived in England. Police say the deceased is 64-year-old Henderson Greenwich who was staying at Thicket in St. Philip. He was struck by a car driven by 28-year-old Rico Clark of Lot 17A Merricks, which is also in St. Philip. Now, reports are that Greenwich was earlier involved in another vehicular accident and was awaiting the arrival of a tow truck. It was while Greenwich was walking to the tow truck that he was struck by Clark's car, which was traveling in the opposite direction. Lawmen say he received multiple injuries and was transported to the QEH by ambulance. He later succumbed to his injuries. The accident occurred around half past 11 last night along Four Square Road in St. Philip. Well, it was truly a celebration of his life this morning as dozens of loved ones came out to pay tribute to 35-year-old Damien Taylor, the cyclist who tragically lost his life just over a week ago in a collision along the Barrow section of the highway. Damien was deeply involved in the entertainment fraternity, so it was no surprise that his tribute was full of music and revelry. Chanting Dapper, this one for you, the group of family and friends braved the rain and walked from Massey Worthing along Golf Club Road and to the Garrison Savannah in his honor. Included were some familiar faces in the music industry like Matt Fingal, Ishaka McNeil, Lorenzo and Terry Mexican Arthur. When I saw the rain this morning, I honestly thought that we would have to call it off. But then they called me and told me that a lot of people was waiting uh, down at our starting point. So then we just came down and as you see, the crow just kept building and building. So we're happy to do this for Damien today. We all will miss him because he was a deep thinker. You know, he would call you at 2 3 in the morning and ask you about music, crop over music, about the direction. And, you know, so we would all miss him. He was very well loved. As you can see, all of these people here came out to see him. And uh, we're really going to miss him. Well, this type of event is not the norm in Barbados and brought out some curious spectators along the route. However, those who took part saw it as a fitting tribute to a man who was loved by many. Most of the people here would have played with him in different bands and the dancers were performing with him at night. So we just decided to do a walk and play some music, some happy music. Um, in his memory. He would have loved this. This is what he loved. He really loved music and, you know, somebody just tell me, he, you know, he's smiling. Um, but he really, really enjoyed music. Playing trumpet and playing uh, flute, playing drums here. He was a, a really good musician. Well, stay with us. There is more news after this break. Community Files. The Community Development Department invites persons to register for its basic dressmaking course to be held at the Bayville Community Center beginning in January. Interested persons may register at the center Mondays to Fridays between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. For further information, persons may call 426-8971. Register as soon as possible.
Monday, January 8th, an incredibly significant event constitutionally takes place in Barbados. The installation of our new vice regent. As a constitutional monarchy, this illustrious individual performs the duties of head of state on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. Join CBC TV 8 this Monday at 3.20 as we bring live coverage of the installation of distinguished jurist Madam Justice Sandra Mason as she becomes Barbados' 8th Governor General. New life and economic activity continues to be injected into Spitestown as yet another business has opened its doors there. Rianne Phillips tells us more. Hugo's Restaurant is the latest addition to the seascape in Spitestown. The two-story property was opened on December 22nd, and from all reports, it has been well received. General Manager Brian Tatum says the first two weeks in operation have been great. We had a great response. We were getting what we did before we opened. We did a very big marketing campaign and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and we got a lot of response. We put teasers out there so people knew that it was coming. Uh, and when it did come, we had a great response. We had a great response from local and also to a lot of guests that were here. Fifteen people are employed at a restaurant, which aims to offer clients a unique dining experience. If you, you look north, you see the cement plant. You look south, you see the jetty uh, in Spicetown. And I don't think there's any restaurant that has that unblemished view, north and south, and then the ocean straight ahead of you. So that, I think, is a key feature. Mr. Tatum believes Spicetown is an ideal location as a town's future is bright. I think Spicetown is in, in a developing stage and I think that Spicetown will eventually become the golden coast of Barbados. Uh, there's a lot going on in this area. Uh, buildings are being, uh, restaurants, nice bars, nice places to eat. Uh, so I think that moving forward that we can see some sort of activity pretty soon in this side of the island. Hugo's is the latest addition to the town in under two months. Back in November, bargain store S.Y. Adams opened its first outlet in the city. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. Thanks, Rianne. Well, Sean Green is all mic'd up and ready to go. He'll tell us how the sporting world fared on this rainy day here in Barbados. So stay with us.